Here's a question to pose at you. The 2A has shall not be infringed in it. And the reason they put that in it 230 years ago is because they know if anybody starts messing with the Constitution, especially the Second Amendment, that people will get this bright idea that to help get that they'll be the i've already said this in another video uh, it kind of personifies them to do a heinous act which would help push that through to get rid of the second amendment and that's what all these shootings are the, this is a second this is a the democrat agenda is what all these shootings are for to get rid of the second amendment or as much as they can of it and this is their whole agenda. And in thinking that, you might be thinking, no, it's not it. Go back to uh, the Revolutionary War to the Loyalists who just kind of dissipated into the country. And uh, then you had the South raise up with a practically a British flag in the Confederate War, and they were all Democrats. I'm guessing... Democrats are nothing but the loyalists, not the three percenters. Three percenters were uh, American. Loyalists were loyal to uh, Britain, to the monarchy still. And they're the people that they couldn't, they couldn't persuade. It was like they wouldn't go one way or the other. They just let everything go by. I think they maybe uh, helped, you know, they, they uh, housed some troops and stuff like that. Anyway, might be the reason there's a third amendment. So you can't house enemy troops. So anyway. So the Democrats went, or the Loyalists went down south. They might have stayed along there. You know, they're up in, you know, uh, Clinton is a freak, or Hillary's a freaking Democrat and, and whatnot. And they're, you know, so they're Loyalists up in uh, New York. You know, wherever they came from. They went down, but it spread down. It rose back up. Britain rose back up through the Loyalists in the South. And that's the reason the Civil War had a, basically a British flag. It was that subliminal effect of Loyalists. It was, it was uh, instilled within them. Maybe not through books or anything else, but just uh, maybe through their names and whatever. And... Uh, so that's where I'm at now is that the, the Democrats are trying to sell out the USA back to Britain. That's what that prince is. They're acting like that prince is uh, being pushed out of the, the royal family where it's actually he's being put in place. Because I think the Democrats are going to try to sell us out, say, to China and say, have some sort of pact with China without telling anybody. And China's going to come up and say, okay. We need our money back that we loaned you guys, and we need it now. And the only way for us to get it is that we're going to have to borrow, since we can't, you can't borrow any more money from uh, uh, China, they're going to borrow from Britain. And Britain's going to loan money, but they're going to say, we want, you know, to pay back China. And there's some Democrats to do this are probably getting paid crown money, you know, somewhere in the crown some uh spy of whatever they are they're going to try to buy back the u.s through the debt the debt we owe to uh uh china is going to cause a big chaos of selling out they'll probably sell out a bunch of land to Britain, because Britain's going to say, well, we want some land. If we're going to give you trillions of dollars, we want some freaking land. And they're going to take states. You know, it might be California. It might be New York. I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know. It might just be the northern states, like Minnesota through, you know, wherever. But, I mean, that's a, that's a real possibility of that happening because of all this, the, the debt that's just being not even tried to, nobody's even trying to balance a the budget they're just spending out their yin yang and they want more taxes because they want to spend more now before the 16th amendment 
the reason they brought up the 16th Amendment was for a bunch of different reasons. Uh, one, what has happened is we had two world wars after the uh, 16th Amendment war into place. So basically, in all the wars from the World War One all the way up was uh, being financed by the 16th Amendment. We get rid of the 16th Amendment. They don't have that bargaining power to just go to war and everything. And there's another thing. I don't think the government should have power over the military. We're the military. We the people are the military, not the government. We the people should decide when your sons and daughters are deployed to some country to die or fight or kill or whatever whatever the reason. You know, I'm not saying they should die. You, you make somebody else die for their country. But I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to take that effect either that way either. Because, I mean, if you go, if you travel to a foreign country, the people you meet on the street are the people, if you was in a war, that's the people you'd be with. And, uh, you know, if you get friendly with them then, and the only thing that basically problem the two countries have are governments. We the people don't need to fight governmental wars. That's government. They have no uh, diplomacy whatsoever except to fill their pockets. And as soon as they want something from somebody else, they use us to get it. So I say we take the military, the hell with them. The hell with the government. If they let them just be in debacle and chaos. I could care less. They're not doing anything right anyway. That's what I'm going to say for now. Anyway.